evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard. Hope you're doing wonderful this Sunday evening. Today's Sunday evening's conversation is a very special one, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be talking to a young man who's all the way in Cameroon, and his dream is to be in the NBA. But we're going to hear his story about how his struggle with even a civil war in his country, as well as fighting every day, things we take for granted, just to see him go through these things for his dream to be in the NBA. And that's for Sunday's conversation entitled, Risking My Life for My Dream. The Sherrod Show is brought to you by our new sponsor, um, Queen Team Apparel. Queen Team Apparel is all the way from um, Atlanta. They are one of our new sponsors for the Sherrod Show. They make really nice t-shirts as well as custom wear. Her information is right on your screen. You can always uh, email them or go to their website if you would like something made. Again, that's Queen Team Apparel. I'm so excited. And then the Sherrod Show is also brought to you by Essence Television. Essence Television is a new network and home for the Sherrod Show, where 130 million people can see the Sherrod Show in all its episodes. We have upcoming Robert De Niro coming on the show, Ray Liotta, Holly Berry. Uh, we're also going to have um, Tyler Perry, and the list goes on. But tonight's very special episode is with Kennedy, Kennedy, Mr. Kennedy Lamaris, all the way from Cameroon. Ladies and gentlemen, many people have a dream or have aspirations to get to the NBA. Everybody's journey is different. Some people have to go through college. Some people get drafted like Kobe straight from high school. And then you have those like this gentleman here who has to dodge bullets every day in order just to get to his dream of being an NBA. He stopped by, he's in Cameroon. He stopped by the Sherrard Show to tell us a little bit about his story. Welcome Kennedy to the show. How are you, sir? Thank you very much for having me on your show. I'm fine. I'm doing great. And I appreciate you taking a moment. Ladies and <coughs> gentlemen, this is not Usain Bolt, even though he looks just like him, ladies and gentlemen, this is not Usain Bolt, <laughs> but he is a humble young man who is doing big things. Kennedy, when did you um, get the inspiration to want to be in the NBA? Who's the people that you saw that said, you know what, I want to take this journey to the NBA? Um, growing up as a kid, I always had a love passion for that game, love for the game. I usually watch a game on TV, like watch Kobe and LeBron play. Like I watch them like every day. So I, re I developed that passion for the game. I saw what they were doing. I was really interested. And I really wanted to play the game. But coming from Africa, you have some things that are, lets you down, like where you are from and things like that. So I just had to put put through my dreams, like focus focus on what i wanted to be like to be like them those are the food i i love watch them play may the soul of kobe rest in peace he, he helped me a lot as, as a kid growing up like everything i had to do and but just watching them play made me like kind of happy and everything up so now w what do your friends say about because he being a basketball player is that something very uh popular in africa or is it more like playing soccer slash football which one is more popular in your country <laughs> My country is more of playing soccer, soccer, uh, football than basketball. Especially where I'm from, from the city I'm from, basketball is a kind of rare activity or sports being done there. So, so it's just that kind of a difficult thing just for me as a basketball player. I'm also limited to stuff like facilities to train and coaches just because of soccer is more popular and people are no more interested in that game. Now, you, um, most kids who even grow up in the inner city, they have their struggles in cities like Chicago, New York, LA, places like that, where they have to worry about gunshots and things like that. But in your country, there's a civil war going. And I saw, and there's footage running on your screen now, ladies and gentlemen, where you see Kennedy has to duck down and dodge bullets in the midst of just doing something as simple as practicing his game in basketball. What's the civil war about, and how do you deal with that on a daily basis, Kennedy? You, you know, growing up, we usually just watch the civil war just on movies and TVs and everything, or just like something, something we watch, and it was, I don't know how to explain it, but it was something like normal. We never had that. I never got to know on that point, you become like what we have happening now in my country now. It's something difficult and something that kind of catastrophic because people keep on dying every day and things going happening. It's kind of difficult for me. You see me in the video lying down with just like bullets were flying into the corners. I rightly said in the video and I had to 
duck down just for some few hours for the police to pass. That's something that happened on a daily basis in my country just because of the civil war and I also find difficulties on going to the courts for some time just because of the bullets and everything. The fighting has been going on for almost four years now and kind of bringing down everything down in my country, starting from kids not going to school, the economic and everything. That kind of really bringing down my country into that kind of floor level and everything. So I just try as much as I can to fight for my dreams, not just for myself, also for the kids here in Africa and everything and my community too. To also give them that hope that they can do it no matter where they are from, no matter what is going around them, everything just need to focus on what you want to become. Now, now, Kennedy, for you though, um, when you, bullets are flying like that and you know this, your determination must be so great to even go and want to do this in the midst of bullets flying. When I'm sure your family probably tell you to stay in the house, stay in the house, yeah. don't do it. Is that what your family tends to tell you? Yeah, yeah, they do that all the time. Like stay in the house to stay safe. You need to be at home. Mm -hmm. Now, um, tell me all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what is the civil war about, first and foremost? The civil war is all about the the government and the English speaking part of my country fighting for <clears throat> for my, the English part of my country has been going through a lot from the government, so they had to fight for, I don't kind of, I just like to raise my comments because if you like to go into the details of it, you may become a victim of certain stuff like that. But mm -hmm. the government and the English part of my country have been fighting for almost four years now. That's all I can tell you for now. Okay, okay. Going into now, the yeah. Now, Kennedy, tell me what your day-to-day -day routine is um, for practicing for the NBA. What time do you start? What time do you end? And what's your regiment like? Like like now is is like twenty something minute guns past the half three. On my normal day routine, I'm like kind of now watching some videos and some highlights of coaches and matches. Like now the NBA is going on. I watch some matches and some highlights and stuff like that to be able to improve my games on where I think I need to improve my games on. Mm -hmm. Let's say six o'clock or seven a.m. in the early in the morning, I get up and I start going to the court around twelve. 1 p.m. in the afternoon. When I get home, I get some rest. <clears throat> I hit the gym in the evening from 6 in the evening to somewhere around 10 or 11. I go back and I get some rest. So that's my daily routine. I just train like twice a day. But sometimes I find it difficult to go into the court due to what's happening in my country. I have to train at home and certain stuff like that. But apart from that, my normal day is like training twice a day. And preparing so hard, I try to intense my training section because going to the NBA is not just a day job, not just by saying in your mouth you want to go to the NBA, you want to reach there. You need to put in the work because a lot of kids out there like you also trying to go to the NBA. You need to put in the work, you not know, to be the best in what you have to do, to, to be the best in what you do, to be able to make. So, so Kennedy, um, everybody, as you just mentioned, so many have that dream to be in the NBA, but um, few many times they're not prepared for it, but you're making you're making amends and you're doing a lot of things to compensate for not having the adequate trainers and things like that. Um, first of all, now you're Kennedy. You're six five. Is that correct? Hi, Kennedy. Are you there? I'm six two, six six five, six two. Okay, so you're six well, you're two. On the house of bounds, for I, I corrected it. It was six two, not six five. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, yeah. your 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 aspiration is to be a point guard, shooting guard. What is it? Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> point guard or shooting guard. Okay, yeah, my aspiration is to be a point guard or shooting guard. Mm -hmm. Now, um. This is for all those who are watching now, again, NBA um, people are watching this and they are paying attention because I did uh, call their attention to it. So this is your time to shine. And there's a reason why um, we had this gentleman on for the Sherrard show, because um, when it comes to baseball, um, 
Dominican Republic is one of the most popular places where the major leagues go because some of the best players in the major league uh, oftentimes comes from the D Dominican Republic. Um, but there's great basketball and baseball players all over the world. Now, this gentleman just so happens to be in a country where it's not popular where NBA is, but he wants his shot and I want you to have your shot. But you tell me, Kennedy, why should the NBA give you a second look? <clears throat> I would love the NBA to get, like, thank you for your question. Like, I would love the NBA to give me a shot of what I, how to play in the NBA just because I know I'm going to do great. I'm kind of working so hard and every day in my life to make sure I make it there so I can also give the chance to other kids. I can also, I can also bring light to the other kids in Africa, not just my city as a whole. There's a lot of raw talent in Africa where, kids are able to are looking down on that dream just because of where they come from, like where they are, not from the cities, a lack of equipment and everything, just give up. There's raw talent in Africa, not just in basketball, not just in soccer, not a, more education. So I, I'm just like kind of trying my shot out there just to make it to the end so I can also give, I can also motivate other kids all over the world. That it doesn't matter where you come from, it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter the situation you find yourself in. If you, you're determined on what you want to become, you're going to do it through hard work. Now, um, this gentleman is a man that's coming from the reality. A lot of times kids say they come from the streets. This man is really coming from something pretty tough to be able to make it to his dream. Now, um, Kennedy, once you make it, and I know you're going to make it in the NBA, if the Lord says so, are you going to um, bring your family from Cameroon to the States? My my family is not the only thing I'm that kind of working on now. My is I I'm just trying to give my family a better life, and all the kids all over the world from places like I come from. So my family is not going only going to be the only thing I'm going to concentrate on, as if I make it to the NBA. I'm making it to the NBA not just all about me, as I rightly said on one of my videos. I just want to try that kind of I leave no one behind. If you're hardworking. I want to become something, I give you a shot. So, you know, that's all about my family bringing to the USA. I just want to give my family a better life. If that, some of them want to come to the US, USA with me, good and fine, but I'm out there for the other kids like me, where I come from. Because me being here from Africa and where I come from and the gunshot and everything, I've taught me a lot of stuff, not just all about basketball, but about life and reality. So I'm just that kind of working hard every day, not just for myself anymore, but for every other kid area in Africa. If I can't reach you, my, if I can't reach you financially, I should be able to motivate you to work. So I'm just that kind of trying to make everything, like every kid out there to give it a shot for his own self and his own family too. Now, um, Kennedy, what would you tell people about Cameroon that they may not know? Something they need to know about your home country that people don't know. We maybe take it for granted here, but it's something that you perhaps go through aside from the civil war on a daily basis in your country. Cameroon is an amazing country in the world, full of raw talents all over, basketball, soccer. Basketball is something that's coming in new in Cameroon. And I love the way they're kind of embracing it. They're kind of trying to, I'm not the only one putting in their work into it. Maybe God just decided to use me as a platform for all our people. I have a lot of kids here, day in, day out, training just to become players, either to play in Europe or whatever, basketball, soccer. Cameroon is that kind of beautiful place. We've got a lot of raw materials and everything. Like It's a place you ever like to ever come and have kind of a chill or everything about life or stuff like that. Cameroon is rich in culture and everything. Cameroon is a, is a love, peace and loving country. Sorry for the peace at first. Uh, Cameroon was a peace and loving country at first, but now you see the war and everything, but Cameroon is have a lot of other love, foreigners and everything. It's a country you love to visit once one one day in your life, Sam sir. So so uh Kennedy, when you get your first NBA check, what are you gonna use it for? My first NBA check, I'll I'll I would like to get 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 my parents a better a better living standard. I would like to get, I would, I would also love to open a, something like an academic or be like a facility where I come from to also give other kids shots 
because where I come from, I lack a lot of stuff. I see a lot of stuff, kids giving up just because of what they can do. I'll try to build something to make kids to also train in basketball. I also try to give kids. I also try to give kids on other areas, not just in basketball, because I'm not just focused about basketball. Because I was focused just about basketball. That's not the main plan. There are other kids here are not able to go to school just because they lack books or other stuff like that. Or school fees are not able to they're not, they're not able to afford school fees to go to school. So my first NBA check that would be all about it. Just to give other people that hope, that joy on what they want to become or what they want to do for my own city. Then I start spreading it gradually into Africa. You know, ladies and gentlemen, um, we are speaking to um, the NBA prodigy. This is a young man. He's a, a basketball prodigy, and he's going to be an NBA. You better watch out for him. He's a young man, 6'2". He has the build. He's in shape, and he's all the way in Cameroon, and he's on a Sherrard show this evening. Again, Kennedy Lamaris. Kennedy, is it okay? Would, can you take a few questions from your audience tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to that. I would love to. I would love to. Okay, great. So we're going to open up to the questions. Uh, we have a question for you. All right. This is from Jocelyn. This is from Jocelyn. Oh, Jocelyn's all the way from West Virginia. He says, congratulations, um, Kennedy. You look like you're ready to step on an NBA court right now. Um, you look very fit, and we hope and pray you make it there. His question to you is, who, who is the dream person you'd like to play with or uh, play against in your first game in the NBA? Um, that would be LeBron James, someone I admire a lot growing up as a kid. Like I would like to meet him one on one and play him, like have a game with him. Like LeBron he's James, someone that inspired me. Yeah, yeah, LeBron James, someone very I want good. to share the court with. <laughs> very good, very good. Thank you, Jocelyn. Question number two. This is from Amanda. This is from Amanda from Utah. She says, um, we are praying for your journey that you make it. You look like you're on well on your way. Now, her question is, with all of the great point guards in the, in, in the NBA um, and the ones from yesteryear, who do you uh, fashion your style or gameplay to? Allen Iverson, uh, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. Who is it? Now, like the person I, I, I want to play my game, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of work. I watch a lot of his videos. I'm not just trying to play like a, I'm not just trying to play like one point guard that will kind of give me some kind of limitations of what I want to do. So I watch a lot of games of many point guards that have gone through the NBA and I see play. I try to combine what they have and try to improve on my game. Like I would love to have a little bit of Carl Ivan, Steph Curry, James Harden. Westbrook, this. so I'm just trying. I, I'm, I don't want to be like one one point guard. I want to be my playing style to be like one point guard. I'm just trying to com combine a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and trying to improve my game. But I also like to start my career like fire pump, like um, Jam Moran. Like those are the people I envy them playing the game too. Mm -hmm. Wow, very good. Very good. We appreciate that. We'll take two more questions. This is from Daniel from Indiana. Daniel says, um, you're very inspirational to me, Kennedy, because you love the game of basketball and your passion is oozing through the television set, which I agree. His question to you is, what would you do if the NBA thing doesn't work out? That has never been like, uh, you, my plan A is just the same like my plan B. I'm just walking on it. I know I'm going to get a, get a shot into the NBA. Like, I've never thought of why this doesn't work out because I know I'm putting all I got. Like, this is what I want to do. And I'm going to do it because I'm putting in the work and God, with God's help, everything is possible. Like, I've never thought of, I've never started the moment and thought about why it doesn't work out. Because basketball is like everything for me. Like, Basketball is bigger than the game for me, just like my day-to-day -day routine. I just become a part and pass of me. So I've never thought of, if not making it, it's never crossed my mind. Like, Very good. Very good. All right, we'll take one last question. Uh, this is from Eric. This is from Eric from Los Angeles. Eric says, yes, I'm a fan of yours already because your passion is so incredible. Can you get him some free tickets when you make it? Now, now, come on, Eric. He can't get you any free tickets until he makes it. But <laughs> very good. But Eric's question to you is: What are you going to do to remain humble? Because so many players start off saying what they're going to do, but when they get all this money, all of a sudden they forget their plans. 
what are you going to do to remain humble? I'm just going to stay focused and kind of, I, I already said from the beginning, where I come from, where I come from, where I've gone through, like, being in Africa and being in a war zone and dodging bullets every day just to fight for my dream has taught me a lot of things, not just all about basketball, as a human being, as a person. And that's what I'm going to take to the NBA, that personality that came from Africa, from his, from, from that kind of war zone and everything. Of yes, kind of That's what I'm going to keep in the back of my mind. Every game I go to play and everything I go, just keep on reminding me. Kennedy, you're from Africa, and you know all the stuff that's going on in Africa and stuff, and stuff like that. So that's what is going to be in my mind from day one of my games to the last day I finished playing and everything. Mm -hmm. So being okay. humble is what I'm going to keep from day one to the end. Just remind, keep on reminding, Kennedy, you need to know where you come from. Because when you start losing that focus, when you lost that focus of where you come from, you're still losing your personality and the person you want to become. Now, uh, this last question, um, these how oh, these questions are really blowing up, but we'll do this last question from Miller. Um, this is from Miller. This is from Sh Miller from Chicago. His question is to you just mentioned how you dodge bullets every single day. Is there a time frame when they start flying or you just hear them and have to die? Uh, there's no time frame frame when you have to dodge a certain stuff, it just comes on random. Some days, it's not just like something happens every day. You have some days that are kind of not that kind of real serious, like they can be shooting it far away from the court. You're kind of at the court and you're hearing the sounds far away. But sometimes are closer to the court that some days are like, on your way home. There comes a time that I'm leaving the court on my way home. I can like, let me see you're living. Let me see you're living somewhere down like three kilometers straight to where you live. You don't need to take a bend or certain stuff like that. But due to the shooting and stuff around around the, my way home, I have to go round and round and round. I can spend like close to three or four hours to get home just fighting for my own yeah, safety. Yeah. So it's not just like something that's been yeah, it's not just like something that's been programmed that today. I don't know. It's something like day to day. You don't know what tomorrow holds for like mm -hmm. for your place. Like you don't know what tomorrow holds. Like Oh my goodness. This is breaking today morning. I have to go to the court. I don't know what today holds for me. Yeah, yeah, I can be leaving to the court and something happens on the way. I'm not able to reach to the court or on the court. Something happens, there's no way we need to reach. But just thank God he has been keeping me safe from day one. Like I know he has the purpose for my life and the plan. So I don't need to stick to it and keep on walking. Amen. Well, Kennedy, um, my question to you is what do you do to keep yourself motivated? When you um, hear the gunshots, even before you get outside and you know you got to train, what's the thing that keeps you motivated in the midst of what's around you? I, I just know I, what keeps me motivated is like where I'm going, I'm not the only one fighting for that position and times wait for nobody. The time will not be paused on my own end just because I have wars going on. I will not be giving a fair chance to the NBA just because I have a war going on. I will not be able to play well or they will be treating me differently because I have a war going on. I have a thousand kids out there fighting for the same position I want to be, fighting for the same position they want to play in the NBA. So what keeps me motivation is like time waits for you, nobody. Kennedy, don't think time will be on your side because you have a war going on. So I just wow. kind of keep, I just try to keep myself off, like distract myself, like, Kennedy, forget about the war. If you have been safe up to this extent, God has a plan for you. Just stick to the training and everything up. Because I know that a lot of kids out there want to play in the NBA and they are working their ass off like day in, day out. Because the day I miss training, I just kind of feel like <laughs> Kennedy, I think you'll become the last in the class. Like you need to work up, you need to work hard, you need to give it up. So that's what that kind of keeps me moving. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, that's, I, that concludes our questions. Really appreciate your questions um, as well. If you have any more questions for me, you can always hit um, email us at Essence Television Network so you can have any more questions about the game.
guest on the show. Or you can also um, email as well, Kennedy, if you have any questions for him as well. His email information is on the uh, screen and monitor as well. But make sure um, you definitely check out and, and subscribe to our newsletter as well, Essence Television Network, or just e email us at Essence Television Network at gmail.com and you can be able to subscribe to the newsletter. Once um, Kennedy makes it to the NBA, we will be featuring him in the newsletter and writing a nice article for him as well. Now, Kennedy, um, with the NBA currently watching right now in this episode, tell them something, give them something that they can hear or see about you besides the footage of you working out, but something that's going to let them know we need to fly this man from Africa to get his audition here in um, California. Please tell us. So Riley said it's not all about, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't, I don't want to be that kid that was looked down or pity down because of where I come from. I want to look at that. I want them to look at me like that kid that has the potential, that kid that has what it takes to play here. I don't want, I want them to go past the, the moment of the gunshot and everything. I, I just wanted to kind of, that kid has, a, that kid has a percentage of having a fair chance of everything. Like, like he's from Africa. Let's give him a shot at what he wants to become like. I just want them to look past the gunshot and everything like where I come from. I just want them to give me a, a shout out just because of the potential and, and what they have seen and what I can do. I'm a kid. I'm a, I'm a kid. I'm a kid. Apart from playing basketball, I'm a very hardworking kid. I, I work so hard every day just because I want to play in the NBA. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I have or what I, I do not have. I can play. I can play basketball off sneakers. I can play basketball bare feet. I can play basketball bare top. I mean, I can play basketball. I've played basketball on down the rain. I play basketball like it's something like it's part and parcel of me. You understand? So. I just wanted to give that shot to that kid that has the potential and has the go to to fight for what he wants. I, I just want them to give me that chance. Like this kid is what we want here. We want we want that kind of motivation in the NBA. Not not just to play, to also motivate other players to keep on working. Because by the time you're in the NBA, you start feeling comfortable. That's that's the problem. Like that's that's the whole thing. When you start feeling comfortable on what you're doing. Now you, you start going off track because when you start feeling when you feel uncomfortable what you're doing you always that kind of keep on walking like hey there's someone out there fighting for my same position like that's that's what i want them to to, to see when they when they look at kennedy i don't want them to see looking at kennedy like that kid that was flying over bullets and stuff, and stuff like that now i was not flying over bullets i want them to look at that kid like this hard-working kid kid that's going to bring something special into the nba something unique into the nba you know, being being from Africa, being from Africa, you know, Africa is always that kind of. You know, Africa produces the manpower into the NBA, like the six foot five, the six foot seven, seven foot one. I just want them to look at that kid, not from the from the height or everything. That potential the kid has, like from Africa, playing the point guard or shooting guard, is something that kind of is difficult to see these days from Africa. Africa is always noticed for the center players, the small forts. Or the, or, the, or the power fourth players. So I just want them to give a shot to that kind of kid with the potential he has or what they see out of the shooting and everything. And when you make it, um, Kennedy, you make sure that you are on a Sherrard show first. So you make sure you let everybody know who got you on NBA here at the Sherrard show. That's what I want you. you, you can you promise me that? For sure. I'm going to promise. I'm, I'm for sure. Before I even go, like, I would like to thank... I would like to thank Asa and Jimmy for connect, getting me to know the Shurad show and everything. I want to thank, I want to shout out to them. And I also promise I'm going to make it, as I make it to the NBA, Shurad show, I'm going to show up there. Not just because of you asking, but I just want to thank you guys for using your platform to, for, to push me out there. Like It's something I had in mind. I never, I, I never knew how to say it, but you asking is something I'm not promising. I'm telling you I'm going to be on the Shurad show if you let me be. Like, it will be up to you. Like, if you let me be, I'm going to show up. We really appreciate you um, so much. And we know you're going to make it, Kennedy. And we're so excited. And believe you me, I hope you're out here playing for the Lakers so I can come to every game and interview you after every game sitting there besides LeBron James. Today is January 31st in Los Angeles. And this is, you heard it first. You saw him first here, Kennedy Lamaris on the Sherrard Show. Definitely uh, tune in, subscribe to Essence Television so you can be able to see this uh 
this uh, episode as well. And then know, ladies and gentlemen, that this is the gentleman that's going to be there. He's humble. He has the attitude and he's going to make it to the NBA, God willing. And we're so excited for him. We thank you for being on the show uh, this evening, Kennedy. We wish you all the best and success. Special prayers that God keep his angels around you until you meet here in the shores of America as one of the NBA superstars and brightest stars as well. And Sherard, and this is Sherard. And when on our next episode of the Sherard Show, we're going to have one of the biggest artists in Trinidad. Ravi B is going to stop by the Sherard Show, as well as some very special guests. So you don't want to miss this. In the meantime, rest easy, and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Sherard Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to the Sherrod Show. Dot com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube video, subscribe to our newsletter at Essence Television Networks at gmail.com. If you would like to get information to the host, Sherrod, you can email him at the Once again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.